Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorrental Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the concept of path difference. Okay, before watching this video, guys, make sure you have an idea about the superposition of waves. Let's say one wave is traveling, another wave is traveling at the same time. If they meet at the same point, what will happen is they will double up, okay? And if one wave is going up and down and the other wave is going in the opposite direction, yes, traveling in antiphase, they should cancel out. Hopefully you have an understanding of that before watching this lesson, otherwise it just won't make sense. Okay, let's talk about the concept of path difference. And the best way I like to talk about it is very simply in terms of the simple words here. What does the word path difference actually mean? What does the word path difference actually mean? Right, let's say this is you. Let's say this is you over here, and let's say school is over here. Yes, so let's say school is over here, and this is your friend. Your friend is F over here, and you know, you are going to go to school. Yes, you're going to travel this distance. Uh, let's just say right now it's going to be this distance over here is 40 meters and then your friend's distance over here there to there that distance your friend is traveling is 60 meters first of all if i was to ask you what is the path difference basically what is the difference in their paths surely you can identify that it would simply be you've traveled 40 they've traveled 60 so the path difference we're gonna put that down over here the path difference in this case is going to be simply the difference in the distances you have traveled so therefore it'd be 60 minus 40 okay so the path difference in this example is going to be 20 meters right keep that in mind because i'm going to use that in my next explanation of what path difference means in terms of waves okay right now from here we're going to do the following i'm going to draw a line over here right okay and i'm going to say let's say for example point x is over here point x is over here right let's say at point x x is going to release a wave so x is going to release a wave and look the wave is going to travel up and down it's going to hit this line over here Excellent. And we're going to draw point Y. So point Y is over here. Point Y is going to be the following. So point Y is going to release a wave and travel and hit over here. Right. Okay. So the key thing is going to be this. Um, first of all, let's just talk about the wavelength. So let's just give this a value over here. Let's just say it's going to be uh, 10 meters right now. 10 meters. So the wavelength in this case is going to be 10 meters. So X is releasing a wave and Y is releasing a wave. At this line here, this detecting line, what's going to happen? Well, hopefully you can identify that as the two waves are traveling and they are in phase with each other, what will happen is they will double up. So let's just say this is of amplitude A, this one is of amplitude B. What will happen is you'll end up with the, a super wave if you want. So just talk about that. So this wave comes out over here and look everyone, it's over here. Excellent stuff, yeah? So it's gonna be doubling up over here and the amplitude of this wave is A plus B. Yeah, um, that is still going to be the dis the wavelength here, yeah, 10 meters here. So these two waves will double up right now. Excellent stuff. Okay, so first of all, keeping in mind the idea of path difference, what is the difference in the paths? Hopefully you can identify that the path difference between X reaching here and Y reaching here, there's no path difference. So in this case, the path difference is equal to zero. So when the path difference is equal to zero, we are noticing that they will double up, that we notice that the waves arrive in phase. In phase, guys, with each other, and doing the same thing at the same time, and therefore they will double up. So therefore, due to superposition, due to superposition, we're gonna say that uh, constructive interference occurs. So that's the term in terms of them doubling up. Constructive interference, constructive interference, is observed. Okay, right, so that's the first bit. So look, when the path difference is zero, we notice that the waves will arrive in phase and they will double up over here. Right, so we're gonna change it very slightly. The same diagram now, but I'm gonna shift Y further back. So just almost the same diagram, so we're just gonna do the same thing. Okay, so almost the same thing right now. So almost the same thing, but we're gonna put Y further back. All right, so Y is now over here and it's gonna emit a wave. There we go, and there we go, right. And we're going to label this distance now. So look, this distance now is 20 meters. Okay, right. Now, what are you going to observe at the detecting line? What's going to happen? Well, first of all, check. Are they arriving in phase? Yes, it's the same as before. And they are doubling up here. Excellent stuff. So we know that it's still going to double up again. So we'll put that down here. So it's going to double up again. So it will be doubling up again. But what about the path difference? What about the difference in their paths? Well, this one is traveling 20 meters, this one is 10 meters. So look here, we notice that the path difference is going to be equal to 20 minus 10, 20 minus 10. 
therefore it's going to be 10 meters. Right, excellent stuff. So the path difference is 10 meters. We notice that it's still therefore going to arrive in phase. So it arrives in phase and it's going to be constructive interference. So constructive interference occurs due to superposition of the waves. Superposition of waves. Okay, right. So I know you might be thinking, hang on a minute, where are we going with this? It's something about the path difference I'm trying to communicate. So here at the start, we notice that the path difference was zero and it's going to be doubling up. Yes, it's constructive interference. And then look here, the path difference is 10 meters right now and it's still doubling up right now. It's still going to increase. Right, we're going to draw one more and then we're going to make a conclusion. Okay, so third one, right. So why are we going to put over here right now? Why is it going to be over here? Why is it going to be much further away compared to X right now? So what's going to happen is Y is going to emit the wave. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, and then up and down again. Right. Okay. Right. So now from here, let's do the path difference. So let's just label this distance right now. We've shifted it now to 30 meters. Okay. So first of all, check. Is it arriving in phase or not? So yes, it's going to be in phase. It's still in phase. So therefore, once again, it will double up. So therefore, um, it's due to superposition. Constructive interference is observed. Constructive interference is observed over here. Right, excellent stuff. Right, and now, what about the path difference now? What's the path difference? What's the difference in the path that they travel? Well, we can do this. We can see that the path difference, once again, I take the distance, 30 minus 10. So it's going to be 30 minus 10. We notice it's going to be 20 meters. OK, so now from here, we're going to make a conclusion. There's a connection between the path difference and the wavelength. What is that connection? Hopefully you can spot it. So look at the top one. So right now, the path difference was 0. Yes. And this one, the path difference was 10. And yes, in this one, the path difference was 20. And the wavelength was 10. Yes. So don't forget, we said that the wavelength was 10 meters at start. Hopefully you can identify that when the path difference is a multiple of the wavelength, it will therefore be in phase when it arrives. So check that statement out once again. So I'm going to write that over here. So put that down over here. So look, when the path difference is going to be a whole number of the wavelength, therefore the waves will arrive in phase. So waves will arrive in phase. That is going to be the key thing here. And therefore, constructive interference occurs. Constructive interference occurs. And hopefully that makes sense because initially the path difference we were getting was 0, then it was 10 meters, then it was 20 meters. Look, each time. So look, the path difference in this one is 20, this one is 10, this one is 0. And look, we notice that these are all multiples of the wavelength because the wavelength was 10 meters. As long as the path difference is a multiple of the wavelength, the waves will arrive in phase. Excellent stuff. So hopefully that makes sense to you that the path difference will determine if the waves will arrive in phase or not. Okay, so this is when they double up. What about when they cancel out? We're going to do the same diagram and talk about the path difference again. Okay, so now the path difference, but we're going to look at when it cancels out. So let's say X is here, it's releasing a wave. And yes, the wave length remains the same, it's still 10 meters. Right, we're going to move Y, not that far back, but we're going to put Y from here. Okay, right, let's draw it. So Y is going to release the wave. Look, it's going to come out. Look at what's going to happen over here. Okay, right, let's label this distance right now. This is 15 meters. Okay, what do we notice? First of all, are they arriving in phase or not? Well, clearly not. So they arrive in anti-phase, arrive in anti-phase. Okay, so first they arrive in anti-phase. Therefore, they cancel out. They cancel out. Okay, right. What about the path difference? Don't forget the path difference is simply the difference in the distance they have traveled. So from here, the path difference. So path difference is once again, look, this one has traveled 15 meters. This one has traveled 10. This one's going to be 15 minus 10 meters. And look, the answer is 5 meters. Okay. Well, there we go. When the path difference is 5 meters right now, there we go, they will cancel out. Okay, right. So now we're going to draw it one more time and then we're going to make a conclusion again. So look, we're going to draw it again. Look over here. So look, once again, X is going to be over here and it's going to be releasing this wave. It's going to go up and down and there. And then Y, we're going to shift even further. So we're going to shift Y. We're going to put Y over here. Y is going to be over here right now. 
and look, it's going to go, it's going to release a wave. So one, two, there, there, and there. Okay, right, let's measure the distances again, the distance between X and this detecting line, this line over here. It's going to still be 10 meters. That still remains the same. We're not shifting that. And now Y, this distance is 25 meters. Okay, now from here, let's do the path difference. So look, the path difference now in this case is going to be equal to 25 minus 10. It's going to be 15 meters. Excellent stuff. And therefore, and we can clearly see that it's going to arrive in antiphase. So these two will cancel out. And therefore, it cancels out. It cancels out because they are in antiphase of each other. Antiphase. Antiphase just means they're doing the opposite thing compared to the other one. Yes, this one's doing the opposite thing. I'm going to do it one more time and then make a conclusion. Okay, so now look guys, I've shifted Y over here and I'm going to draw the wave again. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down and up and down. Okay, right. And let's look at the distance right now. Let's say we shift Y right now. It is 35 meters. Okay, first of all, the path difference. Let's do that, guys. So first of all, the path difference uh, is a difference in their paths once again. So therefore, look in this one. This one has traveled 35. This one is 10. So it's 35 minus 10. So therefore, it's going to be 25 meters. And But then you still know it's going to arrive in antiphase. They arrive in antiphase and therefore they cancel out, therefore they cancel out. Yes, they're cancelling out over here. Okay, so now we've done this, let's make a conclusion just for this right now. So look, the wavelength is 10 meters, but when the path difference is five, it cancels out. Look, when the wavelength is 10 meters, when the path difference is 15, it cancels out. When the wavelength is 10 meters and the path difference is 25, it still cancels out. What is the link? It's something about the path difference and the wavelength. Well, the summary is this. Look, this is 5 meters. How much of the wavelength is it? It's going to be the half the wavelength. It's lambda over 2. Yes, it's half the wavelength. Look at this one. It's 3 lambda over 2. Yeah, 15 meters. Yes, 1.5 lambda. And the next one, 25 meters. This one's going to be 5 lambda over 2. Yes, don't forget this one is 1.5 wavelengths. This one is 2.5 wavelengths. Okay, so I've just put it down in decimals right now because some of you might like that. Look, when the path difference is half a wavelength, it cancels out. When the path difference is 1.5 times by the wavelength, it cancels out. When the path difference is 2.5 times by the wavelength, they arrive and they cancel out again. So what statement can we make? We can make the following statement. Hopefully you can see that when the path difference is n plus a half lambda, Yes, half a wavelength, 1.5 times by the wavelength, two and a half wavelengths. The waves will arrive in antiphase and cancel each other out. And this is it, guys. So look, we now have a way of using the path difference to determine if the waves arrive in phase or not. OK, so this is a tricky concept to get your head around, but hopefully it makes sense to you. First of all, that if you want to know if two waves are going to arrive in phase or out of phase, you simply look at the path difference. If the path difference is going to be a whole number of the wavelength, then they're going to arrive in phase. If the path difference is going to be n plus a half times by the wavelength, like half a wavelength, 1.5 or 2.5 times by the wavelength, they will arrive in antiphase. And that's it, guys. Okay, so here is a complete summary. If the path difference is a whole number of the wavelength, yes, zero, one wavelength, two wavelengths, the waves will arrive in phase and double up. If the path difference is going to be n plus a half wavelength, such as half a wavelength, 1.5 of the wavelength, 2.5 of the wavelength, the waves will arrive in antiphase and cancel each other out. Excellent stuff. Okay, so as this is a tricky concept, I'm going to do an example question to get your head around it. Okay, so here's a question I always use to explain path difference. Right, so have a look at it. And here is the question. Waves are emitted from point A. At point B... Are the waves in phase or in antiphase? Right, so look at this diagram. So first of all, we've got a mirror here. You've got point A here. You've got point B there. So we can see that um, one wave from A is traveling, hits the mirror, reflected, and goes and hits B. One wave is going directly towards B over here. Right, so hopefully you can see that there's two waves arriving. They must be either doubling up or cancelling out, but you don't know what they're doing. But you can use the path difference to determine if they're arriving in phase or in antiphase. So don't forget, our simple rule is this. The path difference, if it's going to be n lambda, it's going to be in phase. 
And if the path difference is going to be n plus a half lambda, yes, it's going to arrive in antiphase. Okay, right, there we go. Uh, my handwriting is awful. There we go, over here, in phase and antiphase. So let's just find the path difference and compare it to the wavelength. So first of all, the path difference. So path difference in this case. Don't forget, it's simply the difference in the path they have traveled. So one of them is 40, this one is 20. So look, it's 40 minus, don't forget 10 there, 10 there, minus 20. So therefore it's 20 meters, that's the path difference. And then all you do is simply check, is that a whole number of the wavelength or not? Well, hopefully you can see that, look, the path difference is simply, look, a multiple of the wavelength. 20 meters is four times by the wavelength, yes? which is four lambda, so 20 meters is going to be four lambda. So you clearly know that because the path difference is a whole number of the wavelength, then yes, these ones will arrive in phase. Excellent stuff, these will arrive in phase. Excellent stuff. Okay, so that's one question, what about this one? Okay, same question, just with different numbers. Right, so have a look at it, I'll sort the numbers around a bit, yes, hopefully you can identify that. Right, path difference, the path difference, let's do that again, so the path difference, look, it's going to be 40 minus, look, 15 then, 15 there, minus 30. So therefore it's going to be 10. So the path difference right now is 10 meters. Then all you do is check once again, look, is that a whole number of the wavelength or is it half? Well, look, 10 meters, clearly it's not a whole number. As you can see that when the path difference is going to be n plus a half wavelength, in this case, half a wavelength, this one will arrive in antiphase. So right now, point B, it will arrive in antiphase. I hope that makes sense, guys. And that's it, guys, for another session of Surrounds with Downs with Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going. And comment below if you need additional support. Take care. Goodbye.